Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss Aaron Banks' latest attempts to silence those who are calling him out on his Brexit campaign. But first, if you find yourself enjoying the video, then please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. So for the purpose of this video, I'll begin by briefly explaining the identities of two key people in the Brexit drama who may not be household names to everyone. So first of all is Aaron Banks. This is the man who provided the largest political donation ever in British history, which is also the subject of a criminal investigation as it is of dubious origin. The money was used to fund his Leave.eu campaign, which used lies, intimidation and cyber warfare to persuade people to vote Leave during the Brexit referendum campaign. The second person of particular note is Carol Cadwallader, the award-winning journalist who exposed the work of the now disgraced Cambridge Analytica in stealing millions of personal details from Facebook to use them to con people into voting for leave, in the case of Brexit anyway, but also Donald Trump in the case of the 2016 presidential election. Now, part of her investigation exposed the links that Aaron Banks had to both Cambridge Analytica and various Russian players in both Brexit and the US presidential election. Cadwallader claimed that Banks was offered monies for services rendered by the Russian state and that he lied about his relationship with Putin's regime. She laid out claims regarding Facebook and Cambridge Analytica during a TED talk on Brexit. So Aaron Banks has decided to take Cadwallader to court over these claims. Carol Cadwallader herself, in the meantime, has issued a counterclaim against Banks for harassment in the form of a vexatious lawsuit. She makes the point that Aaron Banks is suing her individually. He's not suing the TED Talks, on whose behalf she made one of the claims, nor is she suing the newspaper that she often writes for where she made the other claims. I mean, this is somewhat odd. When you have a civil issue with someone acting in a professional capacity, you sue the company, even if you name the individual in the papers, of course. But Banks isn't taking any of the newspaper reports, you know, of, of his actions to court at all. Uh, just the journalist on a personal case of defamation. Now, part of the dispute is Cadwallader saying that Banks was offered money by the Russian state. Banks says that he did not receive any such money. But that's not what she alleged. So that has no chance of succeeding in court. The specific centre around leaked documents that show Aaron Banks being offered huge profits for involvement in a Russian gold company that was controlled by the Kremlin. The documents made clear that this wasn't the usual sort of investment opportunity that was open to just anyone. The offer was made to banks by the Russian ambassador to the UK, Alexander Yakovenko. Now, the investigation also discovered that banks declined the offer. So banks saying that he did not receive money from Russia is not a defence against Cadwallader's claims that he was offered it. So what's the big deal if he didn't actually accept it, you may ask? The fact that it was offered at all makes no sense unless Banks has done something that the Kremlin wished to reward. The NCA has been investigating the source of the millions that Banks pumped into the Brexit campaign. There is no evidence that it originated from the UK. That alone makes it a likely criminal act. There is also, this is a huge sum of money uh, for someone even as wealthy as Banks to be donating to a political cause. The line of inquiry for both MPs and law enforcement is that it came from the Russian state. Also in Cadwallader's favour is that her assertions have been published by the UK Parliament as well. So she views the legal challenge as a way of trying to intimidate her. Cases like this are expensive and most people would not be able to run the course. Though I don't think fear of the cost is going to put off someone of Cadwallader's stature and it's certainly not cowing her at the moment. But Banks isn't only suing her. Netflix is running a documentary of the Cambridge Analytica scandal called The Big Hack. It is apparently the most popular show to run on Netflix. Now, as someone who doesn't watch television, I've not seen it myself, but it is being recommended as a must watch by all those opposed to the criminal campaign that led to Brexit. Needless to say, Aaron Banks is not happy about it at all. And before he'd even seen it, he threatened Netflix with legal action if they went ahead with the programme. Press freedom campaigners are concerned that wealthy individuals such as banks are using the courts to try and suppress stories in the national interest. Of course, if someone thinks that a media outlet has libelled or slandered them with inaccurate reporting, and we do get a fair amount of that in the British press, then taking them to court is quite normal. But that's not what's happening here. In fact, banks' intimidation methods have borne fruit before. One of the films he used to try and fool people into voting for Brexit was, you know, on the immigration front, a video purporting to show someone illegally ferrying people from France to the United Kingdom. The video was falsified and the BBC got hold of the story. But after threats from banks, they decided not to run it, even though they had all the evidence they needed to know that the story was accurate. Channel 4 News ran it when they got hold of it later on. 
The fact that such tactics work to rob the population of the truth behind the political acts determining their future. I mean, when wealth and threats can work against some journalist to suppress a story, then you know that the losers ultimately will be ordinary people. Parallels have been drawn to the Maltese journalist Daphne Caruana Galicia. Her investigative journalism was embarrassing the ruling elite in Malta. They also tried to use court cases to silence her. When that didn't work, they attacked her, attacked her dog, eventually murdered her. And that is something we all need to guard against. For some people, the stakes are very high for their political activities. And the stakes, for many people, don't come much higher in the UK than Brexit. And for evil people who will throw everything into winning their prize then when legal methods fail, they do not necessarily give up. Not that I'm saying Aaron Banks would stoop to such methods. He has a temper, we know that, a bit of a violent temper, but there's nothing to suggest he'd sanction having a journalist beaten up or killed in a way that, say, Boris Johnson did. But Banks isn't the head of the campaign. He's just the money mule and a campaign coordinator. But regarding the case between Cadwallader and Banks, you know this is going to run and run. These cases rarely seem to be quick. And if it is just a vexatious lawsuit, as Cadwallader is claiming, just to try and silence her, then of course Banks' solicitors are hardly like to speed things along. And when the case is eventually heard and decided, there will be the inevitable appeals, I suppose. You would imagine that such action is intended to last years and sap a lot of money and energy from the intended victim. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.